Few companies embody the term pharmaceutical giant as strongly as Pfizer. Today on Business Explored, we'll be showcasing the momentous history of one of the largest drug manufacturers in the world. But before we get started on this story, if you're like us at Business Explored, not only will you enjoy learning about great businesses, you'll enjoy investing in them too. Check out the link in the description to get a free trial to our favorite stock research tool. Enjoy! Now back to the video. Pfizer was founded in 1849 by two German immigrants to the United States, Charles Pfizer and Charles Erhardt. Both were in their early 20s and started what was originally a fine chemicals business in a Brooklyn plant, using a loan from Pfizer's father as capital. The first product of the company was a delicious anti-parasitic drug with a caramel flavor. By combining Pfizer's skills as a chemist with Erhardt's training as a confectioner, the company achieved success and laid the foundation for the future development of the company. The convulsions of the American Civil War, which erupted shortly thereafter in 1862, affected the nascent pharmaceutical industry as well as American society at large. By 1868, Pfizer's revenues had doubled since the beginning of the war and their product lines had expanded significantly. After the war, Pfizer continued to focus not only on drugs, but also on industrial chemicals, producing citric acid needed for the nascent soft drink industry, fueling brands like Coca-Cola and expanding Dr. Pepper in the 1880s, the basis for their further growth. Erhard died in 1891 and Pfizer died in 1906, leaving the company of about 200 employees in the hands of M. L. Pfizer, president until the 1940s and the last member of the Pfizer family to run the company. Under his leadership, Pfizer's expertise in scientific manufacturing methods grew significantly. In 1919, their scientists took the lead in fermenting citric acid mold from molasses. They also developed a deep tank fermentation process, the principle of which was later applied to the production of penicillin. In 1936, the company discovered a non-fermented method for producing vitamin C, which quickly evolved into vitamin B2 and B12, and quickly became a leading vitamin manufacturer. When the US government asked the pharmaceutical industry to support the production of penicillin for the military in 1941, this experience in fermentation and large-scale pharmaceutical production put Pfizer in a good position. Pfizer began its first major internationalization, moving to nine new countries in 1951. Through its international expansion, Pfizer trusts local staff in other organizations, hiring citizens and giving them greater autonomy. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, the company continued to release new drugs and expanded its research base. This focus on innovation began to pay off in the 1980s with a string of successes, the first of which, the COX inhibitor Feldine, arrived in 1980 and quickly became one of the world's top-selling anti-inflammatory drugs. Others quickly followed, including Glucotrol, intended for diabetics, and Procardia, an anti-hypertensive drug. The 1990s and 2000s would take this blockbuster hit to the next level, Statin Lipitor, approved in 1997 for Warner-Lambert prior to their merger with Pfizer, became the best-selling prescription drug ever, netting Pfizer $12 billion a year in 2007, accounting for a quarter of total sales. However, the almost Hollywood blockbuster Pfizer of the 90s was a little blue Viagra pill. Originally developed at Sandwich in the UK as an anti-hypertensive drug, it was found to have unexpected side effects that caused the company to quickly change the indications for erectile dysfunction. Like most pharmaceutical companies of this size, Pfizer faced serious controversy as one of the most prominent drug manufacturers in the world, and in 2009, Pfizer faced more than $2 billion in litigation for marketing practices. In the late 2000s and early 2010s, Pfizer, like many other large pharmaceutical companies, also experienced difficulties with the pipeline. 40% of drug sales were attributed to patents and a series of high-profile bankruptcies of developed drugs. However, these challenges in its core drug discovery mission forced Pfizer to focus on other means of maintaining its dominance. 
One thing that highlighted this shift in focus was Kindler's appointment as CEO in 2006. Kindler was trained as a lawyer and was a relatively new employee when he was assigned a better job than others with much longer scientific background, highlighting the growing importance of legal and marketing issues over traditional research and development. He was replaced by Jan Reed and then Albert Berla. Perhaps unsurprisingly, for the largest company in one of the largest industries in the world, Pfizer also knew how to use its significant political clout to defend its interests, becoming the sixth largest lobby in Washington and spending $25 million on lobbying during the Obama health care reform bill alone. Despite this political clout, the company has also tried to destroy its image as a pharmaceutical monster, like so many others in the industry, by spending lavishly on charities, donating AIDS medicines to both poor communities in the United States and developing countries. Pfizer's growth can be attributed to a series of large-scale mergers, acquiring Warner Lambert in 2000, Pharmacia and Upjohn in 2002, Wyeth in 2009, and Medivation in 2016. The company also acquired Hospira for 17 billion US dollars in 2015, a company focused on injections and biosimilars. Pfizer also signed an agreement with GlaxoSmithKline GSC to merge the consumer health businesses of the two companies and form a joint venture with annual sales of $12.7 billion. Similarly, in 2019, Pfizer announced a transaction to merge its generic drug business Upjohn with Mylan to create a combined company called Viatris. The $12 billion deal was approved in November 2020, creating a generics giant with approximately $19 billion to $20 billion in annual sales and operations in 165 markets worldwide. Interestingly, in 2014, the company made an offer for about $100 billion to acquire the British company AstraZeneca, which was going through hard times at the time. AstraZeneca seemed disinterested in the idea, and the deal immediately sparked controversy in both Europe and the United States. The merger would create the largest pharmaceutical company in the world and allow Pfizer to avoid paying expensive US taxes on foreign earnings. Indeed, critics feared that this was the main focus of the merger and that Pfizer would not support long-term investment in research and development in the UK. Unusually, the UK Parliament eventually got involved, perhaps highlighting AstraZeneca's importance to the country's life sciences sector, and AstraZeneca and Pfizer were invited to discuss the company's future in parliamentary hearings. After numerous friendly offers and a similar number of rejections, Pfizer ultimately submitted a final offer for $118 billion, which was also rejected by AstraZeneca, saying it was inadequate. However, this did not stop Pfizer from moving its headquarters outside the United States. The following year, it also attempted a reverse takeover of the Irish pharmaceutical company Allegan. Technically, Allegan would have acquired the American company and renamed it Pfizer, allowing Pfizer to have its tax base in Ireland. At the time, the $160 billion deal was the largest in the pharmaceutical industry. But the Obama administration soon put a stop to these types of deals, changing laws in such a way that the deal was no longer attractive to Pfizer. However, despite some of these setbacks described above, Pfizer remains one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world today. The size of the organization is staggering, with over 100,000 employees. And as the company takes the lead in launching the COVID-19 vaccine through its partnership with BioNTech, it seems like we are about to see where the company can go in the future. The company recently said it owns 74% of the vaccine market in the United States and 80% of the European market, and is set to assert leadership in the treatment of coronavirus for the upcoming release of the COVID-19 pill. Pfizer's sheer diversity and economies of scale likely mean it can shape the pharmaceutical industry in the 21st century. From small molecules to biologics in all clinical, stem cell, and consumer products, Pfizer is sure to continue dominating as it has been for the past 160 years. I hope you enjoyed this story of Pfizer. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and let us know you have subscribed in the comments.
Please check out other videos on more interesting companies. Please also do not forget to check out the links in the description. Bye for now.